final comment uh, against that. I suspect we'll see you in July. I suspect so. Uh, have we? Have we um, and the submission date for that, uh, uh, Secretary, I can tell you, would be in working days uh, before. We've been told July 1, and that's the date we're looking for now. Right, uh, right. Okay, is that all right? All right. Then, uh, uh, we will ask you, uh, in addition, of course, to, the, to dealing with our this application, uh, we will ask you at that time to make a determination of completeness uh, with respect to our application for wetlands alteration. In other words, we will have before you, we will, we believe we will have before you everything necessary to make a determination that that application is complete. Mm -hmm. And then the hearing on that, I guess, would be, if you make such a We would a have to set that yeah. for 30 days from now. Uh, fine. Anything else? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Yes. I just yes. would like to make sure the record reflects that I didn't participate in this discussion because there's some possible conflict problem. Thank you, Mr. Bucks. I'm glad to know why you were quiet. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> our next item of business will, is not on your agenda that you have in front of us, but is Elizabeth Farms. Is there someone here from Elizabeth Farms? Uh, it was on our draft agenda and um, by mistake was not. Elizabeth Farms is coming in for a setting of a bond and also uh, for the uh, approval of an amended final plan signing. That's and correct. Mr. Clough, you are representing? Yes, and unfortunately Mr. Weinshank is out of the country and I'm here in this night. I hope to finally resolve the Elizabeth Farms revisions. The plan has received preliminary approval and the remaining issues consist of the bond the original of which I have a $63,000 letter of credit from Maine Savings with me this evening. The form of it has been approved by the town attorney. The town engineer has approved the amount. And I believe it requires formal action by the board to indicate its concurrence. The form of the letter of credit is the same as for the more basic and substantially larger improvements to the project, which have already uh, has been approved and is held by the town. And the, the letter of credit is basically for the septic system for the new single-family lots that are going to replace the former condominium parcel. Uh, I don't know if the board has any questions on that aspect of it. Uh, there was a uh, wording which Mr. Leahy, our town council, suggested might be uh, included. He's, in he, he did indicate it wasn't necessary. Right. Uh, I just wanted to bring that up for the board to see if that was something you wanted, you felt should be added, or if you were content with it the way it is. Did you all get a copy of that letter from Mr. Leahy? It's dated June 10th, and uh, he suggests uh, adding, notwithstanding the above termination dates, this letter will not terminate or expire unless issue is notified. The town manager in writing of the scheduled expiration date of this letter of credit within three months of its date of expiration. Um, as he stated in his letter, we recommend that change simply to clarify that it is not an independent obligation of the bank to notify the town of the proposed expiration 
but rather a condition precedent to the expiration. However, I do believe the proposal letter of credit is satisfactory in its present form. Uh, we're getting some strange <laughs> unearthly sounds from the exterior of our building. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know whether you've had a chance to think about uh, this or not and how you feel about it. Uh, I simply point out the form of the letter of credit is that which we previously obtained from the town, the one that has been signed. It might be well, certainly, to keep this wording in, in uh, view for the future. Uh, Mr. Butler, do you have any, did you have any conversation with Mr. Leahy on this and do you have any further thoughts about that? Well, it was pretty much felt that in, in future instances this should be tacked on and it was generally the, uh, I think the, the general agreement that that standard um, interpretation of the language would indeed apply to this letter of credit, but that Tom was looking not so much to this letter, but in future letters at the town, be sure to, that that language be inserted in there. Uh, would someone like to make a motion about setting a letter of credit? I think there is one near you. Mr. Tinsman. I've been waiting for a while. Uh, I'd like to make a motion be in order that the planning board sets the amount of the new irrevocable letter of credit for Elizabeth Farms whole field approved subdivision located on Summer Road at $63,000 in accordance with section 16.24C6 of the subdivision ordinance and the estimate contained in the town engineer's letter of June 10th, 1980. Is there a second? It has been seconded. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Mr. Most, are you with us? <laughs> it is unanimous. Uh, and then we have another matter which refers to signing the uh, final plan. And uh, the planning board did not receive uh, this amendment until just this very moment. So. Uh, do you want to explain what this Yes, is there's actually there's two significant components. One, the revised central main power easement that previously concerned this board and the DEP has been uh, recorded in the Cumberland Registry. And the present book and page on the plan was that from the 1950s. We desire to replace that book and page reference with the new book and page, which in fact is the April 19th revised easement that reflects CMP's uh, concurrence in the uh, multifamily area revisions uh, since their power line is in the area of the road. Uh, that has been successfully resolved and that I think would assist future buyers and uh, their attorneys in understanding what has gone on there. The second change pertains to a slight rotation of the boundary line between lots five and six, uh, which is being purchased by Mr. and Mrs. Dan Snow in the context of getting ready for their purchase. Uh, the developer discovered that in its zeal to keep the house away from the, uh, the ditch, which is the 40-foot, I'm sorry, 80-foot drainage easement, that in fact the house was five feet too far the other direction, such that it was slightly too close to the road and the, the line. There is no change in the square footage of the lot. The frontage of lot five, in fact, has increased slightly as a consequence of this change. Uh, we have a mylar with us tonight that uh, very clearly indicates the degree of this change. Uh, there is no change in the, the square footage. And I believe it's a, you know, if it had been originally proposed, it, it, it's hard to see any consequence 
uh, in this particular change. Third revision pertains to a dotted line, which uh, the surveyors determined, uh, in fact, runs on to the abutters land. It's been that way since a year ago. Uh, I'm not troubled by it. Uh, this is not the road proper. It's a 30-foot drainage. So they desire to make that change. Uh, I was not aware of that myself until a half an hour ago. Are there any uh, questions from board members? Madam Chairman, without all of the past plans in front of us tonight, which we don't have, um, has anyone reviewed those changes so that they're consistent with previously submitted plans? I don't believe that's been done. It's been done very quickly as of, as of tonight, uh, kind of looking at things relatively for the first time, except for the matter of the slight angle in the line change. I received that in my office uh, roughly two days ago. Um, I had a chance to review it, the board didn't. Um, that's information I just handed out. The other change in terms of the central main power line, the language I think I believe was submitted in your last packet, it's relatively minor reference change on the plan. Third item, though, is something which may raise an issue for the board, that is this dotted line does extend over into the adjacent property, um, it's not owned by the applicant. Um, it is, however, it was, however, on the plan that the board approved conditionally, uh, something that I think passed by our eyes, your eyes, and the town engineer's eyes the first time. I'm not sure at this point, um, erasing it, though, uh, that may be just one way of dealing with it. But what is that dotted line? It's, it's the, there's, there's two actual components to the road network. One is the 50-foot wide road proper. On either side of the road, there is an additional 30 feet for a total of 110 feet. At the intersection of Park Place, Prout Manor, and Cole Road, there's a the, prop, the road comes close to the abutters' property line. So this road is closer to the... The road has not changed. Has not changed. That dotted line indicates the edge of the right of way that was proposed. It's, it, the, it's not the road. It is a 30-foot wide drainage easement. I'd say that's a fair summary. Madam Chairman? Yes, Mr. Mr. Justice, uh, these are being um, placed in front of us as being minor changes. I, I don't agree with it. I would like to have our town engineer review these plans, and I'd like to have something uh, back to us in a letter format saying that we should sign it. I, I feel very uncomfortable going through this and signing this tonight. Certainly, that this would be a, a quick fix if we s signed this uh, tonight. Uh, uh, usually, we require materials to be submitted at least 18 days beforehand so that we not only we can review it, but our town engineer. So. And, uh, well, if, if the board pleases, we you know, what we would like to do, if that's possible, would be to sign the materials we previously uh, submitted. And then, you know, in terms of the line change, we'll have to come before you later and work that out. The, uh, Madam Chair, just. Mr. Clough, if you could just explain further what you're looking for well, in terms of... Yeah, the central main power design. easement um, was correct at the time it submitted. It's simply that we've re-recorded the easement, which accommodates uh, what we'd always understood to be the allocation of the use between the easement. Uh, there, 
uh, most subdivisions involve the grant of utility easements over their course that aren't reflected on the plan. Um, with respect to the, the dotted line, uh, you know, there has not been, uh, I'm not sure why that was shown the way it was at the beginning. Uh, I'm fairly confident there's not too much that I can do about obtaining that. It is not the road, it is simply a drainage uh, easement. Um, you know, the, the lot five and six differential, um, I'm not completely positive we even need an amended subdivision plan to make that shift. It might be able to be accomplished by private deed. Madam Chairman, my, my feeling is that my, my thoughts are that in terms of the line change, lots five and six, it's relatively minor. But on, in terms of the in terms of the drainage easement, that that's something that if I'm hearing Mr. Mose correctly, perhaps should be reviewed one more time by the town engineer. Well, um, you know, what do we do about the easement? Uh, do we accept a narrow easement in that area now? Or, you know, what's the answer to that? Or it either be, I think that we need the town engineer to either determine whether or not we could accept a, a, a thinner easement or if the road perhaps had to be realigned if he felt that a 30 foot easement was required. Yeah. I think those pretty much would be the two options. Yeah. Madam Chairman, there is another issue. When, when we get a mile hour in, um, I think that it's important to, to, to do that light table analysis to see if it is and presumably it is, but we should have a policy in the town, which we've had in the past, of um, taking that mylar and making sure that it exactly replicates what was discussed and voted on and approved by the board with the plans that we had submitted at that time. I agree with that totally. And I don't think that that points at one applicant at all. I think that that should be and is the standard policy of this town. Um, I, I think, Mr. Clough, that we're getting consensus here that perhaps we can't do anything further tonight. Uh, I and we'll that. see you in, in uh, July. We'll see Mr. Weinshank, I hope. At Mr. Weinshank. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item of business is Kathleen Viola, uh, who is coming in with a daycare for site plan review. And uh, this is under section 19 2-9 and uh, Violet, you are here to represent yourself. Right. I've just got a little review of what's been going on and some added information. Uh, upon my request to operate a daycare at my residence at 6 Elmwood Road, a public hearing was held before the Zoning Board of Appeals on January 26th. After those for and against the daycare had spoken, a motion was made and seconded and voted on three to two to grant me a conditional use permit containing nine conditions, all of which I agreed to and have met with, ex with the exceptions of one and six. On May 17th, I appeared before this planning board for what I thought was the completion of plans for one and six. W number one and number six conditions regarding the fence and shrubbery buffers in compliance with the zoning board. Again, the opposition was there, led by Mrs. Darling of 21 Forest Road. One of her statements was that she felt not only should I provide buffers on my side of the proposed fence, but also on her side. <clears throat> I have provided the board with pictures of my backyard, looking at hers, showing the overabundance of trees, bushes, and shrubs, all of which are on her side of the proposed fence, which would make my fence barely visible to her. If you look very closely at a backyard, you will see that it is very much unkept with dead brush and piles of dead trees that were there when I moved in and have never been cleaned up. My backyard has always been well kept 
as my neighbors can testify. I believe this request made by Mrs. Darling for shrubbery buffers on her side of the fence was designed to further discourage me by unnecessarily boosting my cost. Towards the end of the meeting, a Mr. Harmon of 23 Cottage Farms Road, joining in opposition with Mrs. Darling, submitted some pictures to the board that he had taken the very morning of the planning board meeting. After that meeting, I asked to view these pictures and would like to point out the real truths in them and that rather than discredit me as intended, actually proved favorable, favorable in that they show that I am in compliance with the conditions of the zoning board. Picture number four, all vehicles heading west belong to the residents of Elmwood Road. The two vehicles heading east in compliance with condition number nine given by the zoning board are daycare vehicles. My silver van is parked in my driveway in compliance with condition number four given by the zoning board. I feel it's an intended deception to the board by the opposition to my daycare. Picture number five, no time was given on, given on it. A school bus was stopped heading west on Cottage Farms Road with a red light with a red car stop behind it. This is not one of my daycare vehicles. The school bus stops here at approximately 8.30 a.m. and my last daycare parent comes at 8 a.m. Any traffic created by my daycare is long gone by the time the school bus picks up the children. You have another picture there of the Cape Elizabeth children waiting for the bus at the corner of Birchwood and Forest Road. This is the next stop for the bus after Maplewood and Cottage Farms. Again, no daycare traffic at this time. Again, I believe it's intended deception. Picture number six shows at 10 minutes of eight, a daycare parent, one of my daycare parents, turning left onto Maple Road, enabling this vehicle to travel east on Elmwood, which is in compliance with condition number nine given by the zoning board. I truly believe that the noise that Mrs. Darling is complaining about comes from the children of the neighborhood and is very normal since this, is a since this neighborhood is revolving into one of young parents with children. I have submitted a child count to the board and we came up with at least 55 kids and teens in the immediate area. This of course doesn't count friends and relatives who visit frequently. Juanita Nichols who lived on the other side of my duplex until recently building their own home with her husband and three kids. They very frequently had visitors with children. My landlords have been approached by two or three of these visitors who have been there many, many times during my daycare hours and have expressed an interest in renting the now vacant side. Surely had there been an excess of noise on my side, they would not even have considered it. I am confident that many of these preceding statements were observed by you, the board members, on your site walk of my daycare. Thank you, uh, Ms. Violet. Are there some questions uh, that any board members would like to ask? We've had a number of, of letters testifying, mostly uh, in favor, but also there are a number that are not in favor. So you all yeah, have that. I was under the impression that uh, we had asked Mrs. Violet to uh, get a statement from Chief Pickering on, uh, or from the Chief on, on safety issues in that area. I'll let Mr. Butler respond to that. Yeah. Madam Chairman, if I may. During the normal planning board pack review that happens between department heads, I asked um, Police Chief Pickering if he had any comments or observations about this or any problems. He felt that given some of the changes that, that had been already been implemented by Mrs. Violet, that uh, he didn't foresee any traffic safety or, or health hazards uh, existing due to the use of, uh, due to the daycare facility. Thank you. You submitted uh, apparently some materials tonight, and I don't, we don't know what they are because ordinarily uh, we should receive materials 18 days before our meeting. Could do you want to comment on those at all? Sure. I wasn't able, what this is, is my summer schedule. And until the past few days, I wasn't able to give you one because I wasn't. 100% sure of it. 
Are there any uh, other comments or questions? I wonder uh, how your landlord would feel or whether uh, how you would feel about putting some buffering between in your backyard between your house and your the neighbor that would be in your duplex in the duplex that you are sharing. He is here if you am I not understand the question? Yes, that that would be helpful if he could comment on that. Uh, would you repeat that question, uh, Madam Chairman, please? Uh, I just wondered uh, how you felt about having a buffer established between uh, the two backyards of your, of your duplex. Mm -hmm. Is that? I think we went through this with the uh, zoning board, and that is and, uh, a requirement we, that they yes, ask yes, and, for. and uh, certainly. Um, I wouldn't be here unless we were both in favor of, of uh, having this done. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, you have no objection to I this have no kind objection. of operation that's going on in, in your on your property. That's correct. Yes. Mrs. Guthrie. The owner is here, sir. How long has this been uh, multiplex unit? Well, has it was it? It was built as a um, true bungalow duplex, probably. I bought the house uh, over 25 years ago from Dick Robinson, who lives across the street. And uh, my wife and I used it as our first home and brought up two children in that neighborhood for about seven years until we bought a, uh, a larger home. Incidentally, my name is Andy Mazoyan. And I live at uh, 8 Woodbury Street in South Portland, and I am a taxpayer in, in Cape Elizabeth, as my wife is in Lee. Mm -hmm. Mr. McCoy, I want yes. Uh, I've been to the area several times, and I think I see two houses that were obviously built to be mm -hmm. duplex, duplex on that street, and then all the surrounding houses are single family. Where's the other one? Because I don't think there is a one. Excuse me, uh, if we could yeah, yeah. have you be identified. <laughs> Thank you. So there is just this one. You're welcome. Any other questions that I can answer? Uh, not for the moment, I guess. Thank you very Thank much. You. Any other uh, questions by board members or comments? Or I do want to remind uh, the board that we are here to consider a site plan review, uh, not the use of the property that is determined by the zoning board. Uh, under our site plan review, we should take into consideration such things as as noise and buffers and signs and things like that. So uh, we do want to be careful uh, about making sure that this property is not being impacted unfavorably uh, by butters and uh, by creating too much noise or uh, at least trying to minimize the noise. And the zoning board has required some buffers. Uh, how do you all feel about asking for any more extensive buffers? There, there is a buffer that is being required, uh, a six-foot fence. Around, and you are going to rebuild that, Mrs. Violet. Uh, but you are not going to put any plantings on the inside of your fence. There are plantings, as we saw, those of us who went for a site visit, on in, at least through Mrs. Dowling's yard. What was the, what was the question? The buffers are going on my side, I believe. They are going on mm -hmm. your side of the fence. Yes. And so, so you'll be rebuilding the fence and putting buffering shrubs on your side. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. That goes beyond what the zoning board's required. 
That what? That seems to be going. It, it is included. No, uh, no, it's right. Sorry about for Shelby. It's not okay. Madam Chairman, just for a point of clarification, when I first read that, I, my notion of a buffer is it's something that exists between the proposed use and the surrounding neighbors, and yet when I looked at what was being proposed, I saw shrubs being put on Ms. Violet's portion of the fence and not on the exterior, and I just wanted to raise the issue one for the planning board and perhaps to see if we need some clarification from the zoning board as to what the actual intent was. So when I first read that, I would have anticipated that they're talking about an exterior uh, shrubbery buffer. Um, was it your impression, that it must have been your impression that they were talking about yes. the inside? Yes. Madam Chairman, will there be an opportunity for the public to speak on Uh, I'm sure there are some neighbors here tonight. Uh, this is not a public hearing. Uh, one of the things that we may want to do is to consider setting a public hearing unless you would like to hear some informal comments tonight. I think we should go with the format we have, really. Yeah, but, you know, I only ask the questions to set the public hearing. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah, Mm -hmm. We have to be careful that we don't have an informal public hearing. Right. We do have a, uh, a confusion on the shrubbery, and I was confused also. I looked at the planning board minutes, and one of the planning board members, on the board, I'm sorry, zoning board, one of the zoning board members asked Mrs. Darling if she felt a fence and shrubs help. Uh, she stated that they would, but she was still against the proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure I really understand that, frankly. I, when I first read it, I thought it was going to be a six-foot-high fence, and on Mrs. Violet's side of the fence, some sort of buffer, which probably would further attenuate the, news, uh, the noise, although when I read this, it makes it look as though it was intended to, uh, uh, to be something for Mrs. Darling in the backyard so that the fence might not look ugly to her. I guess that's the I conclude. So I'm, I'm kind of confused as to what they wanted and if I'm not saying you know, what, I, what I would uh, do, but if, if we were inclined to rent this, I think we at the very least have to clear up that confusion. Uh, I think that's an excellent point, and uh, certainly we can, I can talk with the chairman of the zoning board, our secretary, who is, uh, is a secretary for them also, I'm sure has a pretty good idea, but I will call the uh, chairman of the zoning board and determine exactly if what their intentions were, and if this is worded the way they intended. Uh, would it be your uh, inclination to set a public hearing? Would you like to do that? Uh, how do other planning board members feel? Is a public hearing required for this type of application? No, not required. Yeah, the zoning board had a public hearing, voted on the use and a number of other standards that they have for locating uh, this proposed use, um, and then voted three to two to approve the use after uh, extensive debate and public hearing. The issues that we have are somewhat overlapping. We deal with some of the same issues, buffering and noise and impact in the neighborhood same things that the Board of Zone Appeals does uh, as they consider an application. You caution the planning board to narrowly consider some of the site plan review um, the issues that we have to either approve or deny this application. Maybe we could take a few moments and just talk about what those are to see if they have been covered by the Zone Board of Appeals and then maybe decide whether or not a public hearing is appropriate. Um, I'm just, I'm personally not sure whether a public hearing is necessarily required if we're tightly constrained in what we review and if it appears as though all of those standards are met. By our ordinance, we, yes, I'm sorry. You have uh, that, that's just my opinion. 
make that kind of study? Um, certainly by our ordinance, it is not a requirement that we have a public hearing, and uh, I, I think that we've had a lot of material in letter form, uh, and we have all been on a site visit, uh, so I guess if we go down through the row here, we could ask uh, how you all feel about uh, responding to Dick's thought about tackling the uh, interpretation of the ordinances and see where, if the zoning uh, board has covered our concerns too. With the possible clarification of where the shrubs are going to be placed, um, I really don't see what another public hearing by our board would do, would really accomplish. Um, there may be a lot of controversy, but we've seen this controversy in letter form. And uh, we've seen it in the in the testimony before the uh, zoning board, and I honestly don't see what another public hearing would come. Mr. Boxer, do you have any? Well, I'm not sure I understand Dick to say that uh, we aren't supposed to review this subject to all of the requirements of the site plan review, and I do view those items in the site plan review as fairly exhaustive list, uh, so I, I don't think that we can, we look at it narrowly. Uh, on the other hand, it's kind of strange that the zoning board of appeals determines these kinds of uses, and then we look at exactly the same criteria. Uh, that doesn't seem to be very efficient, so I think practically, uh, we, I, I think I have a reason to overrule them. I'm, I'm not sure that that, uh, um, that would be shared by other people, but just in the interest of an orderly procedure, for a reason. And, and I, uh, I think this is a uh, close call. I don't think we need a hearing, frankly. I think we can debate it, make a decision, and I will toss out one of the that I had, which is uh, possibly a short term approval uh, to, to see whether, in fact, we've made the right decision. And I just uh, thought of that recently, but I kind of think it was a We've heard from you, Mrs. Guthrie. I assume you haven't changed your mind. <laughs> and, and Mr. Cross, do you want to comment? No. No. Uh, I, I have a tendency to crew with, with both points of view. I, I would be for a public hearing, though, um, just to to make one final statement. Let the let the neighbors make one final statement before we arrive at a conclusion. I, I would be sure to make a public hearing for that. Um, well, I uh, I think perhaps I would fall down on the uh, side that perhaps we do not need to have another public hearing. Uh, I think our ordinance is fairly uh, explicit as to in what context we can consider uh, the uh, proposal, and uh, there are sections of it that are particularly uh, that do overlap as Dick mentioned the buffering uh, and to refresh your minds on page 1917 the buffering speaks uh, this way buffering shall be located around the perimeter of the site to minimize the effect of headlights of vehicles noise light from structures and the movement of people and vehicles and to shield activities from adjacent properties when necessary Buffering may consist of fencing, evergreen, shrubs, berms, rocks, boulders, mounds, bushes, deciduous trees, or combinations thereof to achieve the stated objectives. Uh, I think number three is interesting in our zoning ordinance, which says particular attention shall be given to the safety and fire protection impact on surrounding development and contiguous and adjacent buildings and lands. Compatibility, well, not example. But uh, I think these are the things that perhaps we do uh, need to hone in on. And uh, I guess we've been assured by the, uh, the police chief, at least verbally, that uh, there is no, does not seem to be any uh, safety problem. The children are dropped off on uh, the side of the street that uh, the house is on, and so they go directly into the yard. 
Uh, I think the noise is a, I would imagine, might be the most uh, difficult situation to solve. And, Planning board has limited the noise by limiting the number of children and limiting the number of hours that they can be outside. Uh, I think the only thing we perhaps can do is, is to strengthen the buffering if we feel that's appropriate. I think it's clarified. Pardon? I think it's clarify the buffering more than spread the dance point. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it on the inside of the fence or the outside of the fence? I don't know how we're going to get that clarified tonight. But, uh, no, I don't think we can. Unless we condition any action that we yeah. take by it being on one side or the other and it being of a certain type. Uh, have you consulted with a um, arborist as to what would be the best, uh, the thickest shrub as far as shrubbery or trees or... I talked with Skillings out in Falmouth and got the names of four or five different ones, the heights and and the prices and all. But I haven't done anything definite until I mm -hmm. had found out what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, we did do this once before, uh, ask that or require that, that uh, a submission or be given to the planning board as to what uh, shrubbery would be the most effective and uh, I, I guess the hang up still is, is which side of the fence we're talking about. Did the planning board get the pictures that I... Yes, okay. they did. Is anybody ready to make a motion? Well, I was just going to ask for a little bit of discussion mm -hmm. on, on the thought of a uh, time limited time period approval for those who are in favor of approval. Uh, I frankly see this as a, as a tough call, uh, despite the fact that the zoning board appeals approved it. Uh, it would be an easy call if it were an area where there were, were no close neighbors and no one would be bothered. Uh, it's difficult to assume that we're going to inflict upon somebody uh, some noise that they hadn't expected when they bought their house. I think it also is uh, a little contrary to what the game is all about to have uh, uh, a lot of home uses of this type potentially uh, and this is probably the most crowded area you can have them so you can only have less reason to say no to someone other than this. Uh, on the other hand, I'm troubled by telling somebody that if, uh, if they want to do this, they shouldn't be able to do this, shouldn't be service allowed in the Cape. Uh, so I guess, uh, and I was anxiously waiting what the police chief said because the safety certainly would have, uh, would have tipped it one definite way with the appropriate buffering. And, and, and I guess I'd have to understand what that did to the sound on both sides a little bit. And I'd, I'd suggest a, a one year approval with the burden being on the applicant to come back in at the end of the year so we see uh, whether in fact the measures that the zoning board appeals suggested the limitation of the hours and children and fencing that uh, made it a good neighbor. And if, and if not, we could revisit it. How does the rest of the planning board feel about that suggestion? <coughs> Mrs. Guthrie? Well, I think it's an excellent one. However, This whole situation has become so controversial that I would be a proponent of a moratorium on granting <coughs> any more of these daycare centers um, a, a, you know, a permission um, until there is further study, if I've made myself clear. Uh, we do have that coming up as a topic for a uh, workshop, and uh, there has been a lot of discussion about this uh, matter, so it does, I, I think you, you make a good point. Uh, any other comments on Mr. Boxer's suggestion of a year's time limit? Madam Chairman, um, I think 
think that it, it's a it's a good idea where there's controversy in an unproven system, uh, particularly as um, we may want to live with the situation for a period of time to see if it is still considered as burdensome given the restrictions that the zoning board of appeals has put on it. The hours of operation, the type of buffering, the type of noise control, the type of the hours of operation, when children can be outside. Um, I think that we might hear in a year from now how things have been over the last year. There's a risk that an applicant takes in going ahead with something for a year and then not being able to do something next year because of an adverse situation occurring. But it may be appropriate to do that given the constrained future uh, <coughs> of the neighborhood. I, I think we heard you. I think you got it out. <laughs> um, Not sure. If I can just make one comment. As we, make, uh, as we take our vote here, and I, I've been through the neighborhood, and I recognize that this is a, a very, very uh, close-packed neighborhood, at least on one side of the street in terms of the houses. But um, we passed an interesting statistic in this country. I was reading about it in the paper last week, that 50% of the women with children under age one now are in the workforce. So the mother home with her child is now, small child, is now a minority, not a majority. So we've got to face some reality in the society that the society has changed. And the need for these daycare centers is more now than ever was before. I think, Mr. Mouse, you've touched on the global view here. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> that's an appropriate remark, yes. Mrs. Catherine? To expand on uh, Mr. Kimmel's global view, I think that it is a problem of society, and society must meet the needs, but uh, I urge us to meet those needs in an intelligent and creative manner, and that is why I suggest the, the moratorium, because we cannot meet those needs by creating nuisances for people, and so I think we ought to put our heads together and um, do something creative that will please everyone, so to speak, if we can possibly do that. A hard thing perhaps, to achieve. <laughs> you know, perhaps daycare <coughs> in um, neighborhoods should uh, have fewer children than eight or ten. And these are the things that we should study. Perhaps the churches could be used to meet these needs. Um, any other comments? Or <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Cross. Um, with Mr. Most, I, I do agree that that, that is a pressing problem. I was talking with someone at Unum just this morning who lost five employees in the last two months because of daycare issues. But at the same time, I believe there's a, a very strong stand that needs to be made on the integrity of our neighborhoods. And it's a very important concept to me that we should keep in mind <coughs> that we do have neighborhoods, they, they do have a purpose and a function, they exist in this community, <coughs> they're reflections of this community. And these types of very dramatic changes that, that can happen, um, we're seeing the conflict being raised right now in, in changing the definition of a, of a given area in the other neighborhood, I think so. That, along with the daycare issue, has to be kept in mind, has to be addressed. Good points. Yeah, Chairman, I think I have my voice back. All right. <laughs> Are you back enough to make a motion? <laughs> and not to go on with my last point, because I forgot it already. But to address the, the points that are being discussed right now, and I think very well discussed, recognize that there's another process that's going on, and that is the Zoning Board of Appeals on a use request, and an application has been passed for this neighborhood, for this house, for this property. And I, I agree, I think we need to evaluate it in, in a larger context of the community and neighborhoods and, and where daycares or babysitting services or whatever things are called uh, evaluated in the ordinance reflects where 
these uses should be permitted or not permitted. I agree with that. But we are, we do have a previous vote by the town that That's says good. this is an appropriate location for daycare services being in this house. And I think we have to respect that vote unless we have something to the contrary. In our site plan analysis, we dealt with the issues as safety and as buffering and as noise and things like that. So while I, while I agree, I think that it is, it's past this property that we have to review those considerations. Uh, Kevin, can we call the question? Yes, uh, Mr. Butler does have something to report. He's talked with both the chairman and the former chairman of the zoning uh, board, so he might be interested to hear. Just for those of you who didn't think town staff were resourceful at times, <laughs> it was before both people's uh, bed, respective bedtimes. Um, found out that the intent was to try and minimize the noise factor and therefore that they were talking about shrubberies to be planted on the interior of the fence. Uh, but they both stated that they felt that they left it up to the planning board to d determine the, the types and the amounts of shrubbery to, to help mitigate the noise. Um, Mr. Most, would you like to move a question? Okay. Um, and we, I might suggest that uh, yeah. you have a good motion in front of you, but you might want to Add consider to Mr. Uh, Mr. Fox's. Be it ordered that the planning board finds the proposed daycare facility uh -huh. as proposed by Kathleen Violet and located at 6 Elm Road meets the standards contained in section 19-2-9C of the zoning ordinance and therefore grants site plan approval for a proposed daycare facility in accordance with section 19-2-9. The facts presented in the following conditions. Uh, that a new plan for the shrubbery buffer be submitted for review and approval by the planning board, that's item A, and item B, that this approval be granted for a period of one year with a requirement that the applicant be returned for approval for subsequent years. And I don't know whether we need an item, this is a, off the record, but I don't know whether we need an item in item C referencing all of the um, items that were put in by the zoning board. Do we need that, Steve? No, I don't think so. I mean, you can do it to double do check, it but both, both approvals are going to apply in and pertain to the applicant. So the conditions that the zoning board put in, we don't have to repeat. Right. Okay, then I'll stand with A and B. Is there a second to the motion? Second. It has been seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. And opposed? It is four to one. And you have your permit, and we will you see you for with a... Um, a plan for the shrubbery and then at the end of the year. Thank Fine. you. Thank you. Madam Chairman, if I may, the, yes. the, need, the submission date for that, if you want the planning board to review it at the July meeting, would be July 1st. That information be submitted to town hall. And by then July 1st. By July 1st, and the planning board meeting will be on July 19th, which is the third Tuesday. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item of business is Spinnaker Heights, a minor subdivision of three lots coming in, uh, not just for a final plan review, but also for an application completeness. Uh, Madam Chairman, yes. before we start the item, it's uh, two minutes to ten. We have new rules for the planning board, but no, no new item can be considered after ten o'clock. We should let the applicants know for John Griffin and I am doubtful that they would be considered as old business and as a priority of the next agendas, but they may not leave at this point. Thank you, Mr. Tinsman, for that reminder. Uh, and if we keep talking, we won't even take up Spinner for Heights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our Mr. Balfour is here, and Mr. Griffin, uh, our do you did hear the about the new rules that we don't consider yes. business after uh, 10 o'clock. I would like to, if possible, request that, that I be allowed to uh, make the only thing that I wouldn't have tonight is the uh, the traffic signal that Bill Bray, who is
submitting that for the July 1st deadline and changing my application to a uh, full application instead of a pay application. Uh, I think probably we need to talk a little first before uh, in a pre-application mode uh, before we go into a uh, a full blown review but we will put you on under old business so that we can move you cl closer to the top and speed you along Madam Chairman? Yes. Are pre-applications required for site plan review? No. So the applicant wants to go to a full uh, site, is it a site plan review or something? It's a site plan review. Okay. Yeah. It's his choice, I'm really sure. The applicant yeah. wants to submit for site plan approval, then presumably he can do that. I stand corrected. Well, you may you come in. The essence of time because, uh, yeah. You, you may. Fine, thank you. Alice, for, for clarification uh, purposes on our rules, those rules provide that it's not relevant for tonight, but it's no new agenda item. It's not a, it's not new, new business item, is that right? If, if we're halfway through old business mm -hmm. and 10 o'clock comes, uh, do we finish all of the old business or do we finish that item on the agenda? I don't think we've discussed this. <laughs> um, we don't, we don't discuss it tonight. It's not the no. issue. It's a question we ought to talk about. Resolve. But let's not okay. resolve that yeah. tonight. Um, uh, yes. Madam Chairman, I'm happy to about what third Tuesday in July. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Right. Thank you for coming. And I'm sorry we're, we seem to take so long. <laughs> Pardon? No, they're coming back. Oh. Now, uh, on to Spinnaker Heights and uh, Mr. Dr. Oh. Owens. Yes. Uh, you have a presentation to make. Tony Owens, uh, Madam Chairman and members of the board, I'm uh, pleased to present to you tonight the additional requirements for consideration of completeness for a minor subdivision spinner for heights. The chairman clarified the uh, item on the agenda which uh, says we're here for final plan approval when in fact we're here for uh, consideration for determination of completeness for a minor subdivision. Is that clear, Madam Chairman? Yes, it is. Right. The additional items submitted in our package on June 6th include a proposed deed for the pedestrian easement, which was uh, approved by the town council at their last meeting and has been reviewed by the town attorney. The second item is the conservation easement, which was uh, likewise approved and reviewed by the town attorney. We have a letter from Mr. Pickering from the police force commenting on the uh, site distance regarding the uh, first driveway on lot one. Additional information was submitted earlier in December, a letter from Mr. Hunter, the town engineering consultant, also uh, showing that that was satisfactory. We've also submitted a final subdivision plan showing the building zone boundaries that were requested as well as uh, we moved uh, the site for House 3 uh, further away from the boundary of the wet line, the wetlands. Also included is a high intensity soils map in the letter from Central Maine Power showing the uh, utility capacity certification. Are there any questions on those pieces of information? I, I would just uh, note that the planning board has not actually received the copy of the easements and uh, the deeds and all until just 
this evening because the town council just approved it very recently and it was not possible to move it along uh, until just this evening. Uh, and I just also would comment that, of course, it is conditional on planning board approval. Um, questions from board members? Uh, you are uh, going to uh, have a wetlands alteration permit submission? It's not my understanding that one will be required because the uh, impact is uh, less than 5,000 square feet. Uh, have you determined that by measuring what? The three places we impact on wetlands are two of the driveways and the sewer line for uh, lot two. And the total square footage of those is uh, less than 5,000 square feet. Oh, and what about the, uh, the lawns that uh, are have you taken that into account too? Aren't you going to have to fill uh, wetlands in order to create lawns? The, the uh, house sites, the building zones, are not within wetlands. But the lawns would be. an area on lot two where the building uh, zone does extend into the uh, wetland. I think we need to have a, a very explicit measurement of that just to see so because that may require a wetlands alteration permit. I think Mr. Mitchell who represented you last time noted that at least 60 percent of the entire site was wetlands. Uh, we, we have recalculated that, uh, Madam Chairman, and we have 56% uh, uh, of the entire parcel is wetland, 44% is uh, upland. It is, is my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the, um, the wetland impact that we're allowed as far as fill and impact is 5,000 square feet per lot. I believe that's what we said, wasn't right. it, Steve, at our last meeting? Right. And our, our calculations uh, in that regard show that we're significantly below that level in all three lots. Except that you have not taken into account lawn. Well, that, that did take into account the, the lawn in lot two. The f less than 5,000 square feet I gave you was for the total parcel, including the two driveways and the sewer line across lot two. The square footage on the lawn, I don't have my fingertips on, but uh, we did review that, and it is less than 5,000 square feet for lot two, including the driveway, the sewer line, and the, uh, the building zone. Tony, are the applicants proposing to build the houses there? No, we're uh, not proposing to build houses. We're, I mean, myself and Mr. Cummings? No. I think that raises or focuses the question that I raised the other day. I guess I wouldn't agree that it's 5,000 feet per lot. I clearly wouldn't agree if a developer was proposing an entire project and was going to build houses. Um, and I don't think he could get around that by saying I've got 5,000 feet per, uh, per lot. Mm. Because clearly the total amount of wetlands, I don't think our ordinance is that exactly. We talked about that at our workshop. Uh, on the other hand, it's, it's infinitely less clear if the developer is just going to sell the lots. Uh, but if the total wetland acreage of this project exceeds 5,000, you know, developed by individual people, there's, there's a question, although I think it tilts more towards the side of the the applicants than if they were going to build the houses. I don't know whether there's some sort of opinion on that or whether you just look at it closely tonight, whether Steve is. Mm -hmm. Well, 
I think we probably need to get a, an opinion from the person who's actually making the decision. That would be the code enforcement, code, excuse me, code enforcement officer. It's my understanding that in the past, for the most part, we've dealt with it on a lot by lot basis, even for a development that's taken, it's been proposed one site that has considerably large amount of wetlands. Um, but I think to maybe clarify that once and for all, we need to hear from the code enforcement officer. My interpretation as it stands now, my understanding of it is that it would be lot by lot, that each lot could have up to 5,000 square feet of wetlands filled, which indeed raises some issues regarding the cumulative impact of that filling. I don't know if the code enforcement administrator wants to say anything or if we want to wait for a written determination. Mr. Dangle, would you like to speak to that? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> In the past cases, if it were, if it were not handled by the planning board through the wetland alteration permit process, as each permit, building permit being applied for from the code office, at that time a determination was made of 5,000 square feet. 